Hello everyone. Bread is the staple food for many countries. All bread making goes through specific stages from raw ingredients to a baked loaf to storage. And this is one of the most satisfying recipes to bake from scratch. Bread can be made in numerous ways and can be differentiated by the way the yeast is introduced and fermented in the recipe. In this session, we will learn about what are breads, how we can make breads and different steps in bread baking. Bread is the staple food in many of the countries such as Middle East, Central Asia, North Africa, Europe and in Europe derived cultures such as those in the America, Australia and the Southern Africa. In contrast to the parts of South and East Asia where rice or noodle is the staple. Bread is usually made from a wheat flour dough that is cultured with yeast, allowed to rise and finally baked in an oven. The addition of yeast to the bread explains the air pockets commonly found in the bread. Owing to its high level of gluten, common or bread wheat is the most common grain used for preparation of bread, which makes the largest single contribution to the world's food supply of any food. After the today's session on breads, students should be able to firstly recognize the role of each ingredient in bread making. They need to understand the principles of bread making. They'll know the steps involved in bread making and they will understand the basic faults in breads. As we know, bread is the staple food. In its simplest form, bread is wheat flour and water mixed together to form dough and baked. Bread as we think of, it is leavened with yeast and yeast grows and splits the sugar that are present to form carbon dioxide. This expands the dough as the dough bakes. The gluten and starch present in the dough becomes firm on baking and we have bread. Bread as we usually make it contains salt, milk, shortening and sugar and may have eggs added to it. Sweet doughs are similar to bread doughs except that flavorings and more sugar have been added. Some sweet dough formulas call for addition of cake or pastry flour. This results in less gluten being developed and less chewy product. Rolls, coffee cake and Danish pastry are similar to breads in that the basic ingredients are flour, yeast and water. Dozens of varieties of rolls and breads are possible. All similar in that the basic structure depends upon flour and water dough. While understanding baking, we need to understand that baking largely depends on the shape and the size of the product that is being baked, the humidity available in the oven, overloading of the oven, and the density of the products that are being baked. And lastly, the type of oven that is being used. Although all yeast doughs are made according to essentially the same basic principle, it is useful to divide products into categories such as lean dough products, rich dough products, rolled in yeast dough products. Lean dough product is one that is low in fat and sugar. And in rich dough products, there is no exact dividing line between rich and lean doughs, but in general, Rich doughs are those that contain higher proportions of fat, sugar and sometimes eggs. And in rolled in doughs, those are in which a fat is incorporated into the dough in many layers by using a rolling and folding procedure. The alternating layers of fat and dough give the baked product a flaky texture. The essential ingredients of bread making are flour, yeast, salt, water and sugar and the optional ingredients are fat, milk, improvers and fruit and nuts. Flour. Flour is the most important ingredient in bread. Wheat flour is mostly used for bread making. Next to wheat, rye is the most popular flour for bread making. Products milled from other grains are occasionally used to add variety to baked goods. 
दीज इंक्लूड कॉर्नमील राइस फ्लार बकफीड फ्लार सोया फ्लार पोटैटो फ्लार ओट फ्लार एंड बार्ले फ्लार वीट फ्लार इज प्रोड्यूस्ड बाय मिलिंग वीट कर्नल्स इट इज कंपोज ऑफ सेवरल लेयर्स दैट प्रोटेक्ट द एंडोस्पोम विच कंटेन स्टार्च एंड प्रोटीन्स द इंटरमोस्ट पार्ट इज द जर्म विच कंटेन्स फैट एंड सर्व्स एज द वीट सीड ड्यूरिंग मिलिंग द कर्नल फर्स्ट पासिस through the metal rollers to crack them and then the bran and germ are removed through repeated stages of sifting and separation the remaining endosperm is then ground into flour flour made from the portion of endosperm closest to the germ is finer and that flour made from the portion of the endosperm nearer to the bran is coarser and darker flour proteins are of crucial importance because of their gluten forming potential now what is important is gluten gluten is the tough rubbery substance created when wheat flour is mixed with water gluten strands are both plastic and elastic that means plastic is that they can change shape under pressure and elastic means that they resume their original shape when that pressure is removed Gluten is responsible for the volume, texture and appearance of the baked goods. It provides structure and enables dough to retain the gases given off by leavening agents. Flour does not contain gluten. Only a dough or batter can contain gluten. Gluten is produced when glutenin and gliadin are moistened and manipulated as when they are stirred or kneaded. The character of wheat determines the character of the flour wheat is classified as soft or hard depending on the kernel's hardness the harder the wheat kernel the higher its protein content soft wheat yields a soft flour with a low protein content soft flour also called weak flour is best for tender products such as cakes hard wheat yields a hard flour with a high protein content hard flour also known as strong flour is used for yeast breads now let's discuss the functions of flour flour acts as a binding agent and as an absorbent agent it gives better volume softness texture and flavor it affects the keeping qualities it builds the structure of the products it holds other ingredients together and most important it is the backbone of yeast goods yeast yeast is the most common biological leavening agent used fermentation is the method by which the yeast acts on sugar and changes them into carbon dioxide gas and alcohol this release of gas produces the leavening action in yeast products the alcohol evaporates completely during and immediately after the baking fermentable sugar is bread dough comes from two sources first sugar added to the dough as the part of the recipe and secondly enzyme amylase present in the malt in flour convert the starch into glucose which can be fermented by yeast deficiency of malt in flour is supplemented by the addition of diastatic malt since yeast is a living organism and it is sensitive to extreme temperatures to so the best temperature for its maximum growth or the optimum fermentation is 20 to 32 degree celsius or 70 to 90 degree fahrenheit salt salt plays a very important role in baking it is more than just a seasoning or flavor enhancer The functions of salt includes it gives salty taste and enhances the sweetness it gives flavor it controls the yeast activity it keeps the product moist and fresh for a long time more salt in the bread formula will make the top crust dark in color it improves the flavor texture and grain it helps prevent the formation and growth of undesirable bacteria at a certain level in the yeast raised doughs 
and it also improves the shelf life. Sugar Any sugar may be added to the bread but in practice we usually use the granulated or the caster sugar. This should first be dissolved into some of the dough water or liquid we use. The functions of sugar include it gives sweet taste. It is the food for the yeast. It produces CO2 that raises the dough fabric or the structure. It improves the flavor and the taste. It helps in retaining moisture for a longer time and increases the shelf life. It helps getting the crest color. It gives smooth, soft, white texture grain and crumbs. It improves the toasting quality, the color and flavor of the toast by caramelization. Milk In addition to contributing water, milk adds flavor and nutrients and contains certain compounds that help produce a velvety texture, a creamy white crumb and a brownest crust. Doughs made with milk are easier to shape, less sticky and heavy and retain their shape better. They also tend to expand during fermentation without over or under development and retain gas better which results in a higher volume. The functions of milk includes it improves the nutritional value. It gives the gas retention power of dough and helps in producing soft and silky texture or structure. Increases the flavor and taste. It improves the crust color and water retention power of bread by the presence of lactose. It enhances the texture quality. It keeps the product moist and increases the shelf life. It helps in binding the flour proteins. It contains butter fat which adds unique flavor to the products. Egg Egg provides richness to the dough. It helps in providing a good color to the crust after baking. It yields a softer bread if we compare the bread made with water. Fat Fat incorporated in the flour mixture physically interferes with the development of gluten creating a more tender crumb. The fats most commonly used in baking are shortening, unsalted butter and margarine. Oil and lard are sometimes used. The functions of fats includes it improves the nutritional value. It helps retaining the moisture which improves the sliceability of the bread. It improves the eating quality, shelf life and texture quality. It gives a characteristic flavor. It improves the crumb structure and crust. It gives softness and taste. It keeps the flour gluten. It provides extendability to the dough. Now let's discuss about bread improvers. We refer to flour as being either strong or weak. The strength of flour varies according to its strength and also according to the factors such as starch content, sugar content, the water absorption power of the flour and even the color. These aspects will affect the final outcome. In order to make good bread, it is not always possible to use the right type of flour as the availability may vary. It becomes necessary therefore to add something to the dough in order to bring the product to a predetermined standard. Bread improvers are substances which when added to the dough enables the baker to produce an improved loaf with better keeping qualities, finer textures, softer crumb, added bloom and enhanced flavor. There are three main types of bread improvers. Firstly, mineral additives. Second, yeast foods and third, enriching agents. Mineral additives or mineral bread improvers are used during the milling of the wheat flour. They are commonly used by the baker during production as well. Mineral additives includes phosphates, lime water, organic acids, lecithin. Yeast foods. Yeast foods indirectly affect the bread in a number of ways by their effect on fermentation. Malt not only provides food directly to the yeast 
but manufactures further supplies as and when needed and softening the gluten of the flour. These are of two types or the malt is of two types diastatic and non-diastatic enriching agents. Enrichment is a way of increasing nutritional value of the bread along with improvements in the volume, texture and the keeping quality of the breads and this is done by fats, milk and milk products and eggs. The functions of the bread improvers includes it increases the gluten strength and soft and shine texture. It improves, it improves the leavening activity. It enhances the dough extensibility. It controls the mold growth. It improves the nutritional value and increases the product shelf life. It helps in increasing the fermentation tolerance and improves the slicing quality. Some examples of bread improvers are amylase enzymes and protease enzymes that helps in the assisting to break starch down into simple sugars and strengthening the gluten. Even ascorbic acid and sodium metabisulfate also helps in strengthening the gluten and softening the gluten. Alcestine hydrochloride also act as a gluten softening agent. Ammonium chloride and phosphates act as food for the yeast. Let's discuss the principles of bread making or the steps involved in making of the bread. First is the collecting of the, all the ingredients. Mixing of the ingredients to develop the dough. Third is the first fermentation. Then the knockback or the punching. After that the dough is divided, the dividing and the scaling, shaping and panning, give the portions desired shapes and put it into the desired molds. After that the final fermentation is given that is known as proving. Then the dough or the dough portion is kept for baking. After baking it is sent for cooling. The most important changes while baking can be observed are oven spring which is the rapid rising in the oven due to production and expansion of trapped gases as a result of the oven heat. The yeast is very active at first but is killed when the temperature inside the dough reaches 60 degrees Celsius. Coagulation of proteins and gelatinization of starches. In other words, the product becomes firm and holds its shapes. And third, formation and browning of the crust. The basic points a bread can be judged on are number one is volume, second the bloom of the crust, third the shape of the bread, fourth the color of the crumb, fifth evenness of the texture of the bread, sixth sheen of the crumb or the shine of the crumb, next is the moistness. And last but not the least is the flavor. The basic faults that can be observed in breads are the crack on the crust, the lack of volume, the texture is uneven, there is less of shine or lack of shine on the crust, the lack of flavor, the bread stales rapidly, the bread is crumbly or there is lack of color on the crust. The various equipments that are used for making and baking of bread are baking trays and molds, proving cabinets, retarders, dough mixers, dough dividers, ovens, dough scorers, dough scrappers, marble table tops and spray bottles. Few examples of the breads of the world are baguette, broche, croissant from France, Ciabatta, Focaccia, Grisni from Italy, Pumpernickel, Pretzel from Germany, Hot Cross Brun, English Muffin or Cobb from United Kingdom, Lavash, Pita from Middle East, Burger Bun, Banana Bread from America and Bagel and Chalha from Jewish Bread. Thank you for listening to the session. Please refer to the part 2 of the video bread fabrication to get 
detailed content on steps of making bread, the types of dough making processes and the various internal and external faults. Thank you for listening.